Come here. Chief Inspector. A wasp. I see. I am returning to Earth. The wasp survives. Temporarily. There's a lady to see you. Ernestine Jouzion. She says you're old friends. I've never heard of her. She wants to report a murder. She does? To you personally, because you're old friends. I'll see her. It'll make a change from real work. Madame? Madame Jussion. Good morning, madame. Good morning, monsieur. Ernestine Miku? Correct. It must be... A long time ago. Shall we call it 15 years, for the sake of my vanity and yours? 15 years. A very generous offer. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Chief Inspector Magra has somebody with him. I see. Anyone we know? Ernestine Jusium. Who? Formerly Ernestine Miku. I don't believe it. It's all right. Still got her clothes on. So, how long have you been Madame Jusium? Twelve years. And it's all above board. We had a priest and everything. Alfred's very strict about going to church. Alfred? You married Alfred, you see? I just told you so. The man we all know and love under the name of Sad Freddy? Yes. And you found happiness together? As much as anyone is entitled to. Good. So tell me, what's happened to spoil it? He found a dead body. He should have reported it to the police. He reported it to me. I'm reporting it to you. Where is Freddy now? He ran away. Why? He's frightened of dead bodies. He's also frightened of the police. Details. Two nights ago. Tuesday night. Yes. He goes out to work about 11. I assume his work is still housebreaking. It's what he does best. Midnight, he breaks into this house at Noyley. He flashes his torch around and there's a dead woman. Alfred said she had blood on her chest, as if she'd been shot. So he ran away? Obviously. And came home and told you? No. He telephoned me from the cafe near the Gare du Nord, about half past five in the morning, told me what had happened, and said he was catching a train in 15 minutes. I have a timetable somewhere. Well, I checked. There's a train leaves for Brussels at 5.45. She there with him now? Indeed she is. Anything to report? No, nothing. Is anybody going to explain to me? Question is, are you old enough? So he's in the house. He sees a body. A car draws up. He runs away. Yes, I said. He didn't want to be caught with a dead body by the man of the house. So the man in the car was also the man of the house? Well, he must have been. Drives in through the gate, up the drive, gets out of the car, lets himself in through the front door, same time as Alfred's leaving by the window. A house with a garden and a gate? Obviously. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned them. And Alfred left by the same window he used on arrival? He always works that way. He takes out the window pane, opens the window, even if the front door's unlocked. He's fatty like that. I hope he's all right. Once upon a time, years before you were born, when Chief Inspector Maygray was a young policeman, he was sent to arrest Ernestine Miku for petty thieving. Fifteen years ago. Fifteen years? That's what he said. <laughs> Ernestine was living and working, if you get my meaning, <laughs> in a third-floor room near the Pot Saint-Denis. Young Maigret went into the room and asked her to accompany him to the police station. She took off all her clothes, such as they were, 
lay down on the bed and said, all right, arrest me. Well, then what happened? Next hour or so, he stood there saying, get your clothes on. She lay on the bed saying, no, I won't. <laughs> so he called for the cops. He called the cops? Two of us went over with a supply of blankets. I see. <laughs> yes, but he doesn't like to be reminded of it. Absolutely not. Could seriously amber your career. The mighty wheels of investigation will be set in motion. Is there anything else you need to tell me? Yes. What? The time you nicked me. Fifteen years ago. I didn't do it. That, as you must realize, is what they all say. Well, there's nothing at all from Nae. No shooting, no dead bodies. Murderers are generally reticent about their work. Alfred Jussiom, also known as Sad Freddy, three convictions for housebreaking, under suspicion for many more. Skillful operator. Due to bad health, he lost his job. As a, as a locksmith with the Planchard Company. Who manufacture and install safes. I think you'll find that our friend Freddy invariably breaks into houses where in his previous career he helped to install safes. Yes. Now, if I were an eager young policeman, keen to impress my superior officer, I'd have checked with Planchard to see what safes they installed in Neuilly during Sad Freddy's previous employment. You've done it. I'm keen to impress my superior officer. Well, we can eliminate the bank and the petrol company. We're looking for a house with a garden and a gate. There's only one domestic property on the list. Guillaume Serre, dentist. 43 Rue de la Ferme. I hate dentists. I can recommend the cassoulet for two. Forgive me, Patron, but today we should be lunching at Neuilly. Number 43. A house with a garden and a gate. Drop us at the restaurant. I'm there. There's a dentist along the street. That's right, Monsieur Sir. Is he any good? I've no idea. Very expensive from all accounts, but then he would be in this area. Does he use this cafe? Well, sometimes. Sneaks inside, bit sheepish. Has two glasses of wine and slips a peppermint or a clove in his mouth. And goes home. Hen peg. Yeah, I dare say. Wife hen, mother hen? One of each, I think. Poor devil. How old is he? Fifty, something like that. Big man. What do you want to know for? Are you police? What's he done? Never set foot into a dentist's surgery without checking on the psychological well-being of the man with the drill in his hand. I'd like to speak to Monsieur Sir. He only sees people by appointment. Would you tell him Chief Inspector Maigret would like to talk to him? Please come in. Forgive my being protective, Chief Inspector, but my son always has a nap after lunch. Do sit down. I have observed the same tradition myself, madame, for many years, when work permits. Tell me, is your son's wife at home? No, she's gone away for a few days, staying with friends in Holland. She's of Dutch origin. I see. When did she leave? On Tuesday evening, the 9.40 from the Gare du Nord. The night train? The night train. <laughs> Forgive me, madame. I have this habit of making small talk sound like an inquisition. <laughs> oh, allow me. My wife often complains about it. 
Won't you come in, Miss Roussel? I heard voices. These gentlemen are police officers. Yes, I recognize Monsieur Maigret. This is Inspector Lapointe. Good afternoon, Monsieur. What are you doing here? We have reason to believe that you've been the victim of an attempted burglary. Reason to believe? What reason to believe? Information, confidential. Not merely confidential, totally secret. There's been no burglary. Everything's in its proper place. I did say an attempted burglary. Had we been aware of such a thing, we would have reported it immediately. You're the owner of a safe installed by the Planchet Company about 18 years ago. I truly can't remember when I bought it. I've no doubt your information is accurate. May I see the safe? It's in the study. I'll show you. Again, as you can see, everything is in its place. They're mostly law books. My husband was a solicitor. Thank you, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Are you happy now, Inspector? My job is the pursuit of truth. Happiness, I leave for the weekends. May I go to my surgery now? Please. Do forgive my son if he seemed a bit grumpy. We disturbed his nap, unforgivable. Good afternoon, madame. Good afternoon. Well done, Lapointe. What didn't say a thing? A silent policeman. Easily the best way to intimidate the citizens, whether innocent or guilty. Did you notice what I noticed? Well, the window pane had been replaced. Good man. everything you can about the wife. Right. And tell Jean Vier I'd like him to keep a watch on the house. Discreetly? No, tell him to make it as obvious as possible. Oh, and not a word to our friend, the examining magistrate. Maigret, I cannot possibly authorize a search of the house on such flimsy evidence. Monsieur Camelio, I believe there's a strong possibility that Monsieur Sir murdered his wife on Tuesday evening. Hmm. Well, your beliefs are a matter between God and yourself. Your evidence is a piece of gossip from a convicted housebreaker who has subsequently fled the country, passed on to you by his wife, who is a prostitute with convictions for theft and shoplifting. I expect better than that. Even from you, my friend. Come in. How did it go? Dead. The examining magistrate? No, the wasp. See. You found out anything? Uh, yes, the dentist's wife, born Maria van Eertz in Schneek in Friesland, Holland. They were married two years ago. She's 51 years old. And before the marriage, she lived in a boarding house in the Rue de Longchamp. Where you're now going? Where I'm now going. Come in. Is that the garden or in this office? There's no lady to see. Do I need to see any old ladies? Madame Sir. Really? Yes. I probably do need to see her. Oh, and Luca. Yeah. Don't go away. I'll try not to. This way, madame. Thank you. Well, 
Does the smoke worry you? My son smokes cigars. Thank you, madam. <laughs> My son also has a tendency to be a little abrupt at times, almost rude. Well, he's an only child. Perhaps it's my fault. At any rate, I wish to apologize for his attitude towards you. Accepted. Now, Madame Sayre, what is it you wish to tell me that you'd rather not mention in your son's presence? Is that what you think? That I've come to you behind his back? Well, for the best motives, I'm sure. Perhaps to save him embarrassment? Yes, quite correct. We told you Maria had gone away for a few days. Maria, that's her name. Formerly Maria van Ertz, from Friesland in Holland. Yes, we know about that. Well, it's true she has gone away, but I fear the marriage is at an end. I don't expect her to return. Our marriage can be a very fragile edifice. She left on Tuesday evening? Yes. At what time? About nine o'clock. Did your son drive her to the station? No, she went by taxi. Did she have much luggage? A cabin trunk and two suitcases. Forgive me for being legalistic, Madame Sayre, but were there any witnesses to all this? Apart from your son, yourself, and Maria, of course. Do you have servants? Only one. Eugenie, our daily woman, but she leaves at five o'clock. I'm afraid you have to take our word, Inspector. And of course I do, without question. Now, moving on. Migre! I'll count it wait. All right, two minutes. Would you excuse me, Madame Sir? How is my timing? Perfect. Keep your voice down. Her hearing's better than mine. Your turn for the dental appointment. Is it? Invent an excuse. Then ask him if he used his car on Tuesday evening. I'll try the old accident routine. Excellent. My apologies, madam, sir. When was the window broken? The window? The pane of glass in the study window. When was it broken? A few days ago. During the storm, whenever that was. It was two weeks ago, madam. Who replaced the glass? My son. He bought the putty and glass and repaired it himself. I expect so. I left it entirely to him. And all this happened a few days ago? Yes. You've been honest with me, Madame Sir. I'll be honest with you. We've been told that a burglar broke into your house on Tuesday night. His preferred method of entry is by removing a pane of glass. His plan was to break into your safe. But before he did so, his torch shone upon something he had not expected to find. The body of a woman, which may have been your daughter-in-law. Where is this man? Why doesn't he make these allegations to my face? How often does your son use his car? Surgery. Has he got a patient with him? No, he's fiddling about with somebody's false teeth, but he won't thank you for disturbing him. Time do you finish work? Five. I'll buy you a drink. I'm a married woman. You were the owner of a motor vehicle registration number 3417HM75? Yes. When did you last use it? I have a right to know the reason for this investigation. At midnight on Tuesday, approximately, a car resembling yours was reported as being involved in an accident. Which do you mean? My car or a car resembling mine? I said a car resembling yours, monsieur. Where did this alleged accident take place? By the river. My car hasn't left its garage since the weekend. You prepare to swear to that? Who are the witnesses to this accident? 
Or is this some more of Inspector Megri's confidential information? It was late, it was dark. The witness may have misread the number plate. I don't believe there was an accident on Tuesday night, officer. In which case, monsieur, we have eliminated another possibility. When we have eliminated all the possibilities, we will be left with the truth. Whatever that is. We were terribly sad when Maria left us. Oh, I know she was in her mid-forties, but she 51. was... 51. Oh, really? She was so young in heart. <laughs> How did she spend her time when she lived here? Oh, culture. Culture? Practically lived in art galleries. Is that how she met her husband? Yes. In the Louvre. Beside the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Romantic, don't you think? Did they meet by accident? Oh, no. By arrangement. I'm sorry, uh, how did they arrange it? Maria put a, a matrimonial advertisement in the newspaper. Oh, I see. Had she done that often? Oh, dozens of times. Uh, oh, she said she didn't believe it. It was only for fun. <laughs> she was so young in heart. <laughs> Did she have any special friends in Holland? Oh, yes, Gertrude Oosting. You know her? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> I've never been to Amsterdam. But Maria used to write to her every day. I think she used to write to her about her adventures. Adventures in the galleries of the Louvre? Oh, to say the very least. Is she all right? Has something happened? What sort of chap is he? Big, strong, knows his rights. So does the chief. Excuse me. Got a date. I promise to buy you a drink. I don't like policemen. How about your employers? Do you like them? They stink. Well, the old lady as well. She's a bitch. About the daughter-in-law. She a bitch too? No, she's a stupid fat cow. So, what's all the fuss about? Maria Sayre seems to have disappeared. She's gone to Holland. Perhaps. Do you help her pack? No, she did her own. How much luggage did she take? Two suitcases and a trunk. You see her go? No, I always leave at five. Look, there's a possibility she may have been murdered. What? Would you think they did it? Got no proof. Do you want me to get you some? I want you to tell me the truth. What about? Start with a study window. Study window? We think it may have been broken late Tuesday night. Monsieur Sayre mended it Wednesday morning. Oh, I always do the windows on Fridays. So you didn't notice if it had been broken? Pity. She's of all his own repairs. Oh, yes. They're too mean to pay proper workmen. He even unblocks the drains himself. Don't happen to know where he gets his materials, here. Glass, putty. Yes. A builder's yard off the Rue de Refuge. Excuse me. Is uh, Monsieur Sarah a customer here? The dentist? Yes, sir. He has an account. Has he bought anything recently? Yes, he came in for some glass after the storm a couple of weeks ago. I see. Nothing since then? Not that I know of. Look, this could be important. Would you mind checking your ledger for me, please? <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, he was in again this week. When? Wednesday. He bought another pane the same size. But you didn't serve him? No. Look, see? 
he was the first customer of the day. Well, he must have got here before we were open. Before well, you were open? Well, the boss is here. He's always early. But I don't get here till eight. Look, tell your boss I'll need a photograph of this page. I'll send someone over. In the meantime, guard this ledger with your life. All right. What time do you expect Madame Oosting to return home? Darling, can you read the bedtime story tonight? Forensic, you got someone available to inspect the motor vehicle? No, uh... Around midnight. When Madame Oosting returns home... Ideally, we'd like to find bloodstains in the interior and something on the tyres. I'm tires. sorry, my love, but it's a very important case. No, no, no. I don't know what we expect to find till you've checked it. Can you ask her to call us here in Paris? That's why we have a forensic department. I can't tell you any details. Yes, it... Paris. Yeah, it's in the lock-up garage. I'll try and be home right What? We unlock it. Yeah, but what time do you expect Madame Oosting to return? We have a situation. A husband and a wife, a mother and a son. Any one of them could be telling lies. Indeed, we know for a fact that one of them is telling lies. Was there or was there not a body? If there was a body... Where is it now? And what is the master detective doing? Encouraging them all to tell more lies. My car hasn't been out of the garage since the weekend. The window was broken during a storm. He might be telling the truth. The storm was two weeks ago. Since then, he has bought two pieces of glass. Why replace the window twice, unless it's been broken twice? Perhaps he's a perfectionist. Perhaps, uh, perhaps he wasn't satisfied with his work first time. <laughs> Even Monsieur Comilo wouldn't believe that. Or, may I suggest, as a mere woman... There's nothing mere about you. Have you considered the possibility that your burglar might have killed a woman and then made up the story as a cover? Yes, but I don't believe it. He ran away as fast as his little legs would carry him. Freddy isn't the murdering kind. Is your dentist the murdering kind? Let's have some coffee. I'm only teasing. Yes, I recognize the symptoms. And I know what you're up to. What? You're following the tram lines in the sure and certain knowledge that they'll lead you to the depot. I'm simply pointing out the tram lines go in two directions. Somebody's coming. Evening, sir. Good evening. Police. I see. Purely routine. Is that Monsieur Sayre's garage? That could well be. Do you walk your dog every night about this time? Usually, yes. On Tuesday night, for example? Yes. Do you notice anything? Anything unusual? Oh, no, it was very quiet. I said as much to Monsieur Serre. Oh, what was he doing, walking his dog? <laughs> he doesn't have a dog. He was taking his car out of the garage. What time would this be about? Oh, midnight, near enough. Just another Tuesday. I now have a formal request from Madame Gertrude Oosting of Amsterdam to inquire into the whereabouts of her friend, Madame Maria Serre. She expected Madame Serre to travel on the overnight train from the Gare du Nord, but she failed to arrive. I wish to question Monsieur Serre about his movements, the use of his car, the apparent contradictions between his statements and those of other witnesses. I wish to... You wish to dismantle his house? With tact and discretion. Additional documentation is on its way from Amsterdam. What kind of documentation? 
Letters written by Madame Sir to Madame Oustang, in which she expressed concern for her personal safety, perhaps even fear for her life. In addition, enough. What is it, you? Uh, nothing, mother. These gentlemen, I believe, would like to search the house. I suggest you go to your room. May I have the keys to your desk, Mr. Sir? Everything is open and available for your inspection. Can you explain this? It's a revolver. Your property? It belonged to my father. Technically, I suppose it was part of my inheritance. We shall have it examined by our forensic people. I clean it regularly, at least once a week. Your father? Yes. He died when? 20 years ago. So he'd have been about your age. He was 52 when he died. Have you arrested him yet? I'm not allowed to say anything. Alfred wants to come home. Have you heard from him? He sent me a postcard. From Belgium? I'm not saying. That's the fashion. What is? Not saying. Everybody's not saying. Well, at least we found a revolver. He left it there to defiers. We can't prove it's the murder weapon, and he knows it. Without a body, we can't even prove there's been a murder. Why isn't he frightened? He should be frightened. What would you have done? It's midnight. You got a car with a corpse in the boot. Head for the river, pick a convenient spot. Must be dozens of convenient spots. Yeah. Don't exactly make it easy, does it? Try it. It's considerably easier than what I'm going to do. Put on a jacket, monsieur. It gets chilly at headquarters later on. Am I under arrest? I'm ready. Ready for what? To hear what you have to tell me. I have nothing to tell you. When a man's wife dies, I expect him to have something to say. My wife is not dead. Where is she? I have no idea. And you still insist your car hasn't left the garage since the weekend? Yes. Even though we have a witness who saw you in the car late on Tuesday night? 
Am I to understand that I'm being charged? No, officially you're summoned here as a witness. If you wish, I'm quite prepared to charge you, or to be more exact, ask the Director of Prosecutions to indict you, which would entitle you to legal advice. I don't want a lawyer. So, for the moment, let's regard you as a witness. Witness to what? To your wife's disappearance. You were the last person to see her before she left the house. At least we can agree on that. Yes. Let us also consider the purchase of a sheet of glass on Wednesday morning. As recorded with old-fashioned efficiency in the ledger at the builder's yard. At the very least, we're concerned with an alarming number of broken windows. What's this? They're yours. Translations of Maria's letters. Ah. The most boring letters I've ever read in my life. Listen. Gertrude, darling, Paris has never been so resplendent, and I very nearly swallowed my pride and went with G and his mother to the forest of Fontainebleau, which must at this time of year be adorned with all the glories of a coro or a corbet. Does she write a lot about glories? I hope the pastel shades of Holland will restore me to full health and the best of spirits. I've got some pastel shades here too. And more about not feeling very well, always tired. Well, I'm always tired, but I don't write letters to Gertrude about it. Have you always been frightened of your mother? I'm not frightened of my mother. You're a secret drinker. Two glasses of wine in the cafe down the street and a clove to take the smell away. It prevents her from worrying. Why should she worry? About the possibility of my drinking. Your father drink? A little. A great deal. And who in your house is or was a hypochondriac? You'll have to explain that, Inspector. There are enough tablets in your bathroom to stock a small hospital. I have a heart condition. My wife suffers from dyspepsia. Your mother? She's as strong as a horse. Your doctor is? Dr. Dutia. Family doctor? Since I was a child. And you and your mother are very close? Yes. Unnaturally close? Certainly not. Unusually close? It's a meaningless question. But you're not frightened of her? No. I'll tell him I need to breathe the air of my own country. He'll understand. What I'm wondering is how he'll pluck up the courage to tell his mother. The old lady still behaves the same towards me, meek and smiling, as long as I do everything she wants. She's the most selfish person I've ever known. That bit's underlined. How's it going? Still going. Is that forensics report in you? Which one, the car or the gun? Car. On its way. I knew you'd say that. Look, I'll take over for an hour, will you? What should I ask him about? Oh, repairing windows, cleaning cars, whatever you like. What if he happens to confess? Make sure he signs it. I remember. Okay. Anything useful? Could be. Ah, this is Chief Inspector Megray. May I speak with Dr. Dutia? I find it impossible to work until the smoke is cleared. <sighs> now, Chief Inspector Megray is more familiar with the finer details than I am. So let's start at the beginning, monsieur. Tell me about Tuesday. Again? Let's start with Tuesday morning. What time did you get up? Dr. Dutia. Chief Inspector. What can I tell you about the Sayre family? How long have you been their family, Doctor? Almost 40 years, God help me. My father had the practice before me. Monsieur Sayre takes tablets for a heart condition. You prescribe them? Yes. His father died in his 50s. 
Did he have a heart condition? Death is always the result of a heart condition. The heart stops, we die. That wasn't the question. I realized. Tell me about the father. His drinking, for example. He drank too much. Women? He was a drinker and a womanizer. Did his way of life contribute to his early death? My late father signed the death certificate. Cause of death, heart failure. Exacerbated by? Alcohol, dissipation, what you will. There's no space on the certificate for things of that kind. There was talk of a drug overdose, but as I say, he wasn't my patient. But your father certified heart failure. Solidarity of the bourgeoisie inspector is every bit as enduring as that of the proletariat. Tell me about the relationship between Madame Serre and her son. Very close. Loving, affectionate, poisonous. Could you send over beer and sandwiches, please? Enough for four people. Five. Sorry, five people. Thank you. The forensic report's on your desk. Oh, reading these letters drives you mad. I'm surprised you got bumped off. It's probably Gertrude who did it to stop her writing. Eureka. You found something? They have. Brick dust. Was your mother in favour of your marriage to Maria? Oh, yes. She encouraged me. Why? Because one day, presumably, I should be left on my own and need someone to look after me. And someone to stop you drinking and womanizing and spending all the family's money. That's totally absurd. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was forgetting. You're not at all like your father, are you? No, I'm not. And was Maria capable of looking after you? Was she ever given the chance? Excuse me. Yes. Right. Was she? Thanks, sir. Can you tell him it's urgent, please? jean take takeover. Right, Chief. Where is she? Waiting outside. Did she say anything? She wants to see her son. Ah, and you said? Impossible. Good boy. Thanks. And I know where the body is. You do? In the river. We knew that already. Quai de Biancourt. There's a wharf where they've been unloading bricks. They found brick dust on the tires of the car. When were the bricks unloaded? Monday. River Patrol? Just been onto them. They're going to send a diver down at first light. Excellent. Another 24 hours and life will be back to normal. Normal? You're going to talk to her? In a while. my mother here? Madame Sir. Good evening, Inspector. How is my son? Well, forgive me for using a medical expression, but as well as can be expected. What did he say to you? That, I'm afraid to say, has to remain confidential. Please sit down, Madame. Thank you. I must apologize for the state of the room. Only it's generally used for common criminals. I understand. Madame, sir, you must understand one thing. If your son is tried and convicted, he will go to the guillotine. But he didn't kill her. I did say if he's tried and convicted. I know he didn't kill her. You have no evidence that she's dead. The body is in a cabin trunk in the river, near the Quai de Bioncourt. We shall recover it in the morning. Then we shall charge him with the murder. You could spare him the guillotine by confessing. Me? Confess? Why should I confess? Why should I kill her? Reasons for killing your daughter-in-law. Let's start with simple jealousy. You glimpse the possibility that your son might be happy with Maria. Might laugh and smile a little. Have what people call... A good time. A good time. And then there's fear. 
fear that your son might turn out to be like his father, especially if after your death, Maria was not capable of protecting him from those same weaknesses. Drinking, womanizing, spending money, damaging his health, and in the end, killing himself. Like father, like son. Isn't that what you were frightened of? Did your husband kill himself, or did I imagine that? Doesn't matter. Perhaps he didn't kill himself. Perhaps you helped him. And perhaps Maria discovered the fact. She was certainly terrified of you. Was she? It's in all her letters. She found your son attractive at the beginning, then boring, then pathetic, but you... She was certainly frightened of you. And with good cause. For when you found out she was about to leave her husband, your pride wouldn't let her just walk away. Oh, no. She had to do things the way you wanted or else. Same applies, I suppose, to your son. There can be few men who'd stand by at the murder of their wife and then help dispose of the body. So I can suggest lots of reasons why you should kill her. Jealousy, fear, pride, and envy. Envy? Because she'd be alive and living with your son when you were dead. Lots of reasons. Does there have to be a reason? Does the law demand it? No. Chief Inspector. <laughs> I would like you to hear my confession. company. Tell Freddy he can come home now. <laughs> <laughs> 